I think a lot of it came from growing up and loving more than just science. So when I was growing up, very serious artist, serious musician, poet, loved to read, and absolutely adored math and science. And that was not what was supported at that time. Uh, you know, it just, you were supposed to pick one or the other. And, and also, I was very much into boy things as a female. And I think part of the, the message or the, the passion I took out of my experiences was, I want to change this for others. I want the world to be a place where anyone, whether they're poets or football players, can become a scientist and be nurtured and welcomed. I want a world where we really don't think it's weird for people to love a broad spectrum of disciplines. And, you know, if you want to change the world, the most important place to change it is in our educational culture, because that's how we develop our, the citizens, citizens. That's how we, you know, if you're going to grow scientists and engineers, for example, or politicians or anything else, probably the most dominant thing that shapes who they will be is what their experience as an undergraduate is. I mean, also, obviously, high school is important, graduate school is important, but I think because most undergraduates are in that, you know, 17, 18 to 22 range, they're really growing as people during that experience. And, you know, it's also, I think, really important at the graduate level because the graduate level is when, you know, people start to get really narrowed. And if you can keep the lens broader as they're going through their PhDs or master's degrees and have them see that there are many different ways to experience the world and they're all va equally valid. And that's, of course, one of the reasons that Green College is so important. I would say make sure that when you take a faculty position, you go to a place that really values interdisciplinary work. And some places do much more than others. So that's, that's the first thing. I'd also say make sure you have champions, senior people who are understanding your work on, in each of the areas that you're going to work in. So for example, while I was at Princeton, we recruited a very uh, talented young wo woman who was half in the Genomics Institute and half in the Computer Science Department. And I knew she was going to be just fine because I knew that both uh, the head of the Genomics Institute and the leadership in the Computer Science Department thought she walked on water. And if you're in that situation and love the fact that she was shared in between, and sure enough, she went ahead and she got tenure and she's doing extraordinarily well. But if I had seen a situation where you know, one of those two fields was not supportive of her, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have encouraged her to take the job. So that's the number one thing. The number two thing is you have to find a way to have, if you're crossing more than one discipline, you have to find a way to have the people who are solidly in each of the disciplines actually be able to appreciate what you're doing. The worst thing that can happen is if you're stuck in between and nobody really thinks that you are, you know, they say, oh, well, that person's really a biologist. And then the biologist saying, oh, no, that person's really a mathematician. And then when they talk to each other, they're going, oh, well, this person doesn't belong to either of us. Clearly, this person doesn't belong. So it's, I, I think it takes a special kind of commitment, even today, when interdisciplinary work is clearly much more valued than it used to be. First of all, I'm Canadian A, and there wasn't, in my opinion, there wasn't a great computer science department in Western Canada at that point. There were two great ones in Ontario, the University of Toronto and the University of Waterloo. And I had felt for a very long time that there should be a great one in Western Canada, and that the one that I would have chosen to build a great computer science department was UBC because it had a very strong faculty of science and computer science was in the faculty of science and it always has always seemed to me if you want to build something really strong, it's better to go to a place where that thing is weak but everything else around it is really strong and then it's easier to bring it up to the level. My parents, uh, my dad in particular, my parents were living in British Columbia, my dad was getting older, our kids were three and six, 
I wanted them to grow up as Canadians. I wanted them to go to French immersion, and of course that wasn't really an option in California. Um, both my husband and I had always said we were very idealistic, and this was a chance to actually test that idealism. Um, I, I just had always loved Vancouver. I came to Vancouver for the first time when I was 13, and I thought it was so beautiful. And I remember saying to myself, when I'm old enough to be in charge of my life, I'm living in Vancouver. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just lots of stuff. And, and when we talk about the best decisions we've made in our life, you know, for my husband, number one was getting married, number two was having your kids, and number three was moving to UBC at that point. You know, when I left Princeton, I remember Shirley Tillman, another transplanted Canadian, saying to me, you know, why would you go to Harvey Mudd College? You're supposed to go be president of Yale or Michigan or something. And I said, because the root of culture is primarily set in undergraduate education. And if you look at the research enterprise in the US, it's doing fine. If you look at undergraduate education in science and engineering, it's not doing fine. 50% of the students who start out uh, majoring in science and engineering have switched out of those fields before they graduate. And that's disproportionately female and minority students. I think a lot of it is that we don't motivate the early years in science and engineering effectively. We make it too abstract and not enough fun. I mean, you can make something extremely rigorous, but still be lots of fun.